What's up everyone? Today I want to talk about the biggest difference between having a coach, personal training, whatever you want to call it, and going to the gym on your own and trying to, you know, go your own way. Um, <clears throat> I do try to not sell myself as a necessary, uh, something necessary in order for you to reach, for anybody to reach their goals, right? But I am here and there are coaches out there because they do work. However, people are not usually ready for planned progressive overload. And that's the biggest difference when you have somebody coaching you, somebody training you versus you going out on your own. When you're going to the gym on your own, nine times out of 10, you show up to the gym and you weren't as well prepared as you could be. You didn't sleep well, didn't drink enough water, eat enough food, you had a bad day, whatever the reason, you still make yourself show up to the gym, good on you, but now you're only putting out 50 to 60% effort and you figure spinning your wheels at the gym is still much better than not going at all. Okay, well, when you have somebody writing your programming for you and thinking about your progress long term and how to get you to those, those places, um, I'll just use myself for an example. Um, I'm not writing your next workout and I'm not writing it around the fact that you're going to go out and slam tequila all weekend and not sleep and eat like crap, right? So when you show up on Monday, I'm expecting you to take care of your end of the deal outside of the gym. And what happens is this is reality, this is life. A lot of times people don't hold up their end of the deal, right? So they show up to the gym and now they're putting out 50, 60, 70% effort um, because they're not taking care of themselves outside of the gym. And now the workout is compromised. And this, can t this carries on, you know, you talk with your trainer, I'm so sorry, I did all these things, please, uh, you know, absolve my sins, I repent, I'll do better next weekend. And, you know, mistakes continue to happen. And so over the long period of time, you have a bunch of these workouts where you're only giving 50, 60, 70% of your effort because that's all you have that day based on what you did outside of the gym. And then you start thinking to yourself, well, okay, I'm not seeing the progress I'd like to see. Maybe I need to add more days in or I need to do something outside of the gym and increase the amount of times I'm working out. But you don't change your habits. You're still not sleeping, you're not eating, you're going out drinking, you're doing all these bad things. So yes, you're increasing the number of times you're working out or what you're doing, but you're still only putting out 50, 60% effort. And so now you have, this, you have this increased frequency of a very low average output. And that's really not gonna do any better than working out only three or four times a week. <clears throat> the clients I see the most progress with are the ones who, when they leave the gym, they are preparing for their next session. So they're recovering from the session they just got done with, they're sleeping well and eating well, drinking plenty of water, and on the days that they are training, they are doing everything that they can to prepare for the gym that day. They're looking forward to the gym. Now this doesn't mean that the gym is their entire life and they're obsessed with it and things like that. No, but they are taking care of the things that they need to take care of. They're eating well, all those things. When, they, when those clients do that, they show up and they're able to put out 80, 90, 100% of their efforts. And again, it's those clients that even if they're only showing up three days a week, the clients that put out while they're here, they put in the work while they're here, they're the ones that see the progress. You get much more out of just three days a week, real good work, 90%, 100% effort, than you will five or six days a week doing half-ass workouts. So again, people are not ready for that. They're not ready. They're used to thinking that they'll just show up and do what they can. Well, coaches, good coaches don't write programs like that. They're not writing a program going, well, I hope she can at least do this. No, like I'm trying to push you to that next place that you want to be to. So again, I think I've said this in previous videos, it's the clients that keep things as simple as they really are that see the best progress. Don't worry about the gym here. 
don't worry about increasing your workout days and doing more outside of the gym and adding running into your routine. That's not what you need. What you need is when you're done here, you need to recover from what we just did. And what that's gonna allow me to do or allow your coach to do is, it's going to allow them to progress you faster because I can only progress somebody as fast as they adapt to a stimulus, right? So if you're not recovering, if you're not sleeping, drinking, eating water or drinking water, um, your ability to adapt and become stronger, uh, to become better at what we're doing here in the gym is gonna be very prolonged, okay? So again, stop thinking that you need to add more. I know this is a real big fault of a lot of people um, you know, in their fitness journeys. It's not about adding more in, it's about quality, right? Okay, so that's the thing I'm trying to say. It's not quantity, it's quality. And um, this has actually been echoed in not just general population, but even like the best athletes in the world. Um, a very well-known American weightlifting athlete, CJ Cummings, I've had a few conversations with his coach, and he has said it's not about those two-a-day trainings and training five or six days a week. It's about letting your athlete recover so that when they do come in, you can get really good quality, high intensity work. Um, another example is uh, my wife, Trish. Believe it or not, she really only gets maybe two or three days of training in a week, yet she's still able to perform and compete at a very, very high level in powerlifting uh, in her categories. And that is because when she's here, and you can ask anybody that watches her train, when she's here, she is hardly ever doing one of those easy workouts, like 70%, 60% effort workouts, unless it's right after a competition and she's doing, you know, GPP work or, you know, sort of recovery work. Every workout in her cycle is really hard, 90% and above. But again, she's only able to do that because she's recovered and she's doing everything she needs to do outside of the gym so that when she comes to the gym, I can write workouts accordingly and progress her as planned. So I hope that helps clear some things up. It's not more, it's better quality. And uh, if you have any questions about what I talked about, feel free to reach out to me, clients, stop me in the gym and ask questions. Thanks for watching.